evening, everybody. My name is Michelle Walker, and I'm with Bridge and Bolster. This is Dr. Steve Phillips. He's the superintendent, and Mr. Scott Linenberger, the HR director at, for Newburgh Public Schools. We want to thank you this evening for coming out to this virtual town hall to have some of your very um, deserved questions to be answered. Um, do you guys hi, go ahead and get started on the first question? And all right, you are up. All right, um, Michelle, do you want me to read the question for everybody or are you gonna read it? I'm going to read it for you, yeah, I can read that. All right, so the first question that was sent in and just for everyone out there, um, there, were sev there were dozens of questions that were submitted, some of which are not going to be answered this evening simply because it's not for the school district to answer. We need to contact STA and make sure that we have all of the air information from them. Once we get those answers, we will then reach out back out to you and get those to you and let everyone know what the answers were. So, Steve, how does bullying get handled on buses? So, uh, bullying on a bus is is a discipline matter, I suppose. It, it's definitely a matter that the the bus drivers uh, wouldn't necessarily uh, handle. It would be turned over to. It would be stopped and addressed, but it would be turned over to the building principals to uh, address with the students more and uh, get the parents involved. So. It's definitely a building issue, um, not a bus driver issue. Okay. So if they have any kind of issue, they need to speak with the school. If yeah. there's, okay. All right, pretty straightforward. All right, the next question is, are kids allowed to cross the major highways? Yeah, uh, we definitely don't want that to happen. Um, <clears throat> if you have to be let off at a highway, we would prefer that you're let off the highway that um, you, you exit the door and you're, you know, right off the highway. You don't have to go in front of the bus and go back the other way. And so, um, all, the routes, the route should be built. Um, the kids should be dropped off in a manner that if they are dropped off on a highway, which we don't recommend, but if they are dropped at the highway, then it's on the right-hand side and they can exit the bus and get off the highway immediately. Okay. All right, next question is, are enough buses being added so that students don't have to sit three or four to a seat? Well, as, as um, I guess I'm thankful for the board on Tuesday night, they approved a contract with first student to come in with four new drivers to help us out. And STA is onboarding a couple more drivers as well. So on Monday, October the 3rd, we should have six new drivers um, on the job. Uh, Obviously, more drivers mean more buses, meaning um, routes are less crowded. Um, I Four to a seat is never acceptable. Three to a seat is acceptable with elementary, um, not middle school and high school. The standard is middle school and high school is two to a seat. Elementary can be three to a seat. Four to a seat is never okay. And um, the other night, Monday night, when we addressed... Um, <clears throat> the town hall here. Uh, we had about 50 some people and one of the questions was talking about kids in, in not in a seat uh, or sitting on someone's lap. That's not acceptable either. Uh, that's not safe. That's not what we, um, that's not our expectation. It's, uh, it's not acceptable. Right. I mean, and if that's exactly right. And so I guess the next question would be with that if there are, you said, six new drivers coming on, do we know if there's going to be any additional at any point in the, in the near future, or have they not disclosed any of that yet? Well, they're definitely working on it. Um, STA is working on training new drivers and getting new drivers, but and I don't know where they are in the process of all those drivers, but okay. uh, you know, they're, they're hoping to ramp up at, as quickly as possible and as many as possible. Okay, all right, thank you. Next question is, does a student who has two homes have the ability to ride the bus to either home, both of which are in Newburgh, or must they stay within the boundary of the school area they are registered in? Yeah, you know, that's a case by case situation that I would, I would, um, well, you know what? Actually, that was a question that I was going to defer to Scott. So, 
So I kind of jumped the gun on that. Sorry, Scott, go ahead. No, and that's that's okay. You're you're spot on uh, in that it is a case by case situation. But for you to add or to get the clarity that you need, whether this accommodation can can happen or not, start with your local school building and check in with the building secretary and, and uh, with the building principal or assistant principal and uh, see if that's a possibility because the transportation company, whether it's first student or whether it's STA, they can coordinate with your building principal. So if you have an agreement uh, where your child stays in two homes, as an example, that maybe there's a coordination. And if it's a, if it's a routine two weeks in one home and two weeks in the other home, I think that at the building level, they can reach out on your behalf and you can coordinate that to make that happen. Good. All right. And I'm not sure which of you are going to answer this next one, but it is if a child is dropped off blocks away from the home and then the bus continues forward and drives past that home, can they then request to stop for the stop to be changed to drop off closer to the home? Yeah, absolutely. They can request it. I, I can't guarantee they're going to it's going to be honored. There's there could be other factors of why um, that's that's not happening. Okay. Um, I guess common sense would say, why not try and make it happen? But mm -hmm. I, I don't really know exactly why the route was built the way it was. So uh, asking, requesting, uh, there's no harm in that for sure. Right. Generally speaking, that's the rule of thumb, right? It never hurts to ask. All right. Next question is, will the buses arrive at CVMS before 4.15 p.m.? I, I imagine um, what they're talking about is the afternoon buses that are supposed to pick kids up and take them home. Mm -hmm. Will they arrive before 15, 415? Well, school gets out around 340. And so um, the goal would be to have the buses there at 340, 345. That's the plan. Um, I, I do understand it hasn't been happening, but uh, the the plan, the goal is definitely to have them you know, a good 30 minutes before 4.15. Right. Okay. And next will be, will the, will the buses, oh, wrong one, sorry, my bad. How do I get the drop-off address changed to the correct address? I think that's where you go, again, back to the building level and start there first and ask for the school to reach out on your behalf to make these address changes. Uh, I've actually have received a couple of emails this year where I've been able to to do that and to facilitate that on behalf of the family. So uh, again, start with your local school first and the secretary and, and uh, the building principal or designee and they should be able to, to get that to happen for you. Next question is, how long are they supposed to wait after school until the bus picks them up? Well, you know, once again, in an ideal situation there, um, when they get out of school, the bus is out there waiting for them and uh, they load up and get moving out. Um, so how long are they supposed to wait? I, I would like to say five minutes. We know that hasn't been the norm. Um, I'm hoping we're going to see some big changes come Monday when we bring on all those new new drivers and new routes. Um, so, I, you know, I, it's, I think everybody understands, it's fair to say, uh, we haven't seen the norm yet. Um, we're still waiting for the norm. And so um, how long are they supposed to wait? I, that's tough to... It's a tough one to answer. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's hard just, to yeah. I will, um, just a little anecdote for this. Uh, when I was in middle school, I, our bus driver never showed up for school to go to school. And I was in foster care and I sat there, we all sat there for at least an hour. I mean, and nobody came to get us This was before cell phones, but I, so I can only imagine what these, these younger kids and when their parents are off at work and they have no idea what to do. They're just sitting there going, where do we, where do we go? You know, especially going to school. So I know that it's gotta be rough for these families. Yeah, it is. And the, the app was supposed to help with that. And the mm -hmm. app hasn't been very reliable. Um, so that's been a shortcoming as well. And that's the STA app, is that correct? Yeah, uh, Ride360, I believe is what it's called. Okay. All right, so the next question, how long is the bus driver giving them to get to the bus after the bell rings? 
and that's going to vary, I imagine. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know exactly. That might be a good question for STA as, TA, TA as well. But I don't really think in most cases the bus is sitting there waiting and then the kids are coming out and they're getting left. I think it's the kids are out there waiting and the bus shows up late. So, um, I, I would, you know, I would imagine if the bus is there and kids are loading up, uh, and, and they've got the bulk of the kids on the bus, they're going to give them, you know, three or four minutes before they roll out. Um, that, that's what, what I would assume. Next question. How can my child get home safely while I'm at still at work in the early afternoon if my home is outside of the district? This question to me looks like it's an interdistrict transfer. And I, I could be completely wrong, but there isn't uh, enough information here for me to make that distinction. So for those of you that aren't familiar for uh, what an interdistrict transfer is, is when you're living in a neighboring district and you've chosen that you want to come to Newburgh Public Schools for your child's education. On those interdistrict transfers, the responsibility for transporting your child would be from you. It wouldn't be from us. We don't have an agreement where we would say go and, and pick up in Tiger Tualatin as an example if a student and a family were preferring to come here. Uh, and I would believe that the converse would be true as well, that if, if we had somebody here wanting to go to Tiger Tualatin, their agreement would say as well that uh, transportation is the responsibility of the family when you're living outside the district. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. When will the morning buses be more consistent asking for parents who have to be at work? Yeah, I really feel bad for the folks that need to be at work and trying to get their little ones off. Um, I'm hoping Monday, you know, once again, Monday, we're going to have six more drivers on the road and um, that's six more buses bringing elementary kids. And then that's six more buses bringing uh, middle and high school kids. And so I think with more drivers, we're going to get more consistency. Okay. Next question is wondering why we are seating three kids plus to a seat on a, on the buses. Sometimes kids on the floor as well. It seems very unsafe. Yeah, I kind of covered this one already. Um, mm. Three per, per, per the Oregon Department of Education. Um, three is okay for littles, um, elementary kids. They, they, they recommend two per seat for middle and high. Um, and, and, you know, four to a seat or in the aisle or on someone's lap, that's, that's not acceptable. Right. I would say that I think that everyone here would say that that's not something that was planned on or, you know, would want to have happen. Yeah. Right. When and why was the decision made to go with the new bus company? Um, the decision was made in... Um, late winter of 21 or excuse me 22 so um what we're in the ninth month so it was made you know seven months ago or so um why it was made i i wasn't here i wasn't part of that decision um i would imagine there was some um level of concern with with first student and how they were providing the service there was a full rfp process and uh, uh, so there was basically a grant application, a uh, proposal for the job, um, laying out what was to be provided. Um, whoever was on that screening committee at the time, an interviewing committee, they screened the, uh, proposals that were presented. They conducted interviews, um, and, and they went with STA, but I was not, I, I wasn't a part of it, but that's, that's typically how the process works. Okay. 